Well, thank you, Beth. I want to thank you and everybody for inviting me, and Mr. Elan is absolutely correct. Uh, it is a wonderful forum. And I just want to say a couple of things, and it is fortuitous, many, many, many of the same things that Mr. Eline was saying. And I also want to talk about journey. One sec. For those people who do know me, they, they realize that for me the most important thing about just about anything you do is the notion of meaningfulness. You've got to live a meaningful life, and that is what Mr. Realine is saying. I have done quite a number of things in my life, and I try to teach my students that meaningfulness is the most important thing. I think that by the time you've lived your life, you want to have experienced many, many things. And I think that the key way to do that is to try and seek empathy. You guys are young and you are learning things at school and if you're successful perhaps you're very studious and so forth. But what you have to do is try to make an understanding with other people and with your world. And for you to seek empathy, that is to provide meaningfulness for you. We are all made up of thoughts and actions and I think the most important thoughts you can have are values, your personal values. I'll leave that to the side. But what I want to talk about tonight is action and I think the most important action you should take is to seek experiential adventure and so I just want to talk a little bit about adventure and I want to say in just a minute about traveling like Odysseus and many of you guys when you went through ninth grade um, probably studied the the epic journey the hero's journey and the odyssey and so forth and I just want to talk a little bit about that I thought I might just uh, touch upon a couple of quick, quick, quick stories, maybe show you a couple of quick photos, and then explain why I think that the, the steps of Odysseus' adventures are important. So for those students who know me, every now and then I'll touch upon a few stories. I've done a few things in life. I remember uh, taking a motorcycle sidecar from Tianjin up into Beijing and traveling across the Trans-Siberian Railway, getting stuck in little Russian villages. and. Um, hanging out with the black marketeers and those types of things. I joined the Norwegian Merchant Marine and I'm the only Australian in history to be an honorary Norwegian Marine officer. That got me, I circumv circumnavigated the planet by a huge container ship. I've climbed all the European summits and when all of this, or rather when all of this used to be up here, I was running up and down these things. I lived in a tiny little hut with massive tarantulas on it up in the Himalayas and I got lost in the Himalayan foothills for a couple of days, nearly died there. Um, I had such chronic dysentery out near the Pakistani in the uh, Hopi Desert out there. Uh, I didn't eat for 12 days and I, you know, I nearly died. Um, hanging out in the monsoons in New Delhi, these types of things. Uh, I was in a South Korean motorcycle gang for three years. I've done a bunch of things like that. I was there during what they called the IMF era and when um, Kim Il-sung died, we were a lot closer to war than you guys may realize. Um, first time I saw my own brother in a couple of years, I mean we are the best of mates so that wasn't a problem, um, was when I flew home back to Australia and I saw him when I was in the front row, the front, pier, um, front pew in this church as he was the lead pallbearer for his own fiance's coffin. I mean, you know, Lamborghini into a uh, telegraph pole. Not so good. Um, you know, I've traveled all over Europe and I, I know about the wonders of the, the Viennese ballet and all these types of things and Louvre and so forth. I've been in movies in South Korea and in Ireland, some of these types of things. I've run with the bulls in Pamplona, and that's pretty scary. Uh, a lot of fun though, lots and lots of times. I lived in London, and I was working there in 1989 when the war went down, Berlin. And for you history teachers, you, and you adults, you know how important that time was. You students who learn about that in history books. What I want, what I want you to do is, in your own way, when you can, move beyond just being a good student and get empathetic with this, which means that you've got to go. You literally have to travel. You've got to go. None, none, of, this, none of this computer business. You have got to go to Berlin. You just have to do it. Um, I've ridden thousands of miles in, well, those boots for a while, but I've got a, another pair of boots. And what I want to say about these boots 
is the notion of empathy is that cliche that you hear about, which is you've got to be in somebody else's boots. You've got to travel in boots. These boots that I'm wearing here, I haven't worn these for a couple of years. These are the South Korean motorcycle boots. These ones here, I hiked all over India in these. I hiked all over Europe in these. Scuffs at the front, those are from Moscow. These over here, these are from the Alps. Down here, the Carpathian Mountains in Slovakia. This is what I'm saying to you guys. You've got to do that. These boots, they're almost 100 years old. I've resold them six times. And it's impossible to get a shine on these because they're almost 100 years old. What I'm saying is, you've got to get your own boots, okay? I've hung out with the Guinness family. I mean, the Guinness family in Dublin. Good mates with Gandhi Guinness. And the reason why was because the French fellow that I was traveling with had to go back to Paris to face a murder charge. Now, he got off that and he didn't kill that woman. Actually, he did kill her, but it wasn't <laughs> murder. It was vehicular manslaughter. But because of that, um, I ended up hanging out with the Guinness family for a couple of weeks. It was great. I got stranded in Panama, okay, and had to, did I tell you this story? Okay, I had to jump onto the side of my ship again. And the Norwegian oh, oh, captain said to me later, the only reason why was because you weren't one of the Filipino crew, which was really quite interesting. Uh, and the other guy that was traveling with me died, is now dead because of a tropical disease. It's hard hanging out in Turkey. I've been all over the place. I've been carrying dead bodies up the gangplank in the South China Sea. Motorcycles across the Transylvanian mountains and so forth. So a lot of that was pain and a lot of that was fear, uh, but it was all experiential. And the point I want to make is that if I do get hit by a bus tomorrow, which clearly is not the plan, of course, obviously, right? That would be a bad day. I have lived a life. And so what I'm saying to you is that you guys and you students who are here, clearly you people are proactive and intelligent. And you are fine, fine young people. And I'm sure you're very loyal to yourself and you're genuinely intellectual and, and you're obedient to your parents. But when you can, try to get empathetic and, and get into your boots, okay? I thought I might just show you a couple of pictures really, really, really quickly. And then what I wanted to do was just really fast walk through Odysseus's uh, epic journey and say why I think each of those steps is important. Could you fire some of these up? Uh, my apologies, some of the, all of these pictures were taken pre-digital uh, and unfortunately 99% of all the travel photos that I took um, back in the 80s and 90s and so forth, they either got thrown away accidentally when I was working in this casino in Birmingham in England or uh, in Budapest, um, in Hungary, which is a shame. This is the, uh, my cabin um, on the MB Tober, the ship I was in, the Norwegian Merchant Marine. Just want to fire through these really fast, please. This is me on top of um, Mount Snowdon in Wales, and that got steeper and steeper and steeper. I was, I was hanging on the side of this here, no ropes, and it was for a trillion dollars, I wouldn't do that today. What I'm trying to say to you is you've got to understand good balance. Yes, be empathetic, but you've got to have judgment. This is the Berlin Wall. This is my friend Simon here. That's me there, skinny, of course. That's the Berlin Wall. Um, Tongdenmun Market, I think. It's Seoul, South Korea. Next, please. That's us on the, my friend David died of a rare tropical disease. Uh, that's us on the, on the Toba. This is carrying, there were dead bodies in here, South China Sea. Carrying those guys up the gangplank was interesting. Uh, motorcycle gang in South Korea. Um, that one might be Costa Rica, I think, I'm not sure. Um, that's me there, Skinny. Obviously you know where this is, of course, right? That's out near Syria, I think, okay? Anytime I've ever had a shave. This one, I'm sure you know. Um, do you see the extra character in there? Oh, this one. This is the running of the bulls with Pamplona. You are not allowed to take, today, if you try and take a camera with you, you get arrested. Um, so that's the best I got there, because they've got a huge bull charging at me. This one, many of you guys know. What island is this? Santorini is correct. Um, that's the running of the bulls there. Uh, Turkey, I think. Uh, Cappadocia, in western Turkey. Uh, people living in the sides of the cliffs. This is down at Shrapnel Gully in Turkey, in Gallipoli. And I traveled through there and went to see the graves of my own family who had machine gunned down by the Turks in the First World War. This is interesting. This is a couple of ca uh, Cantaline children I'd climbed through this, through this mountain, through this tiny little um, 
tunnel and it was very, very, very dangerous. Again, today I wouldn't do this. Coming out the end um, and they saw us and they thought we were devils and tried to kill us with pitchforks. It was interesting. Yeah, this one. Uh, this one is in Gorome, Cappadocia in um, Turkey. If you've seen the famous Odysseus film with Armin de Sante, this is where, this is uh, Calypso's Island just here. Um, Swiss Alps. Uh, Dachau torture chambers in Dachau. These are the, these are the uh, ovens in, at Auschwitz where the Nazis murdered all the Jews. I climbed into this oven here. What I did was I waited until there's nobody down there. I asked permission from the souls above. Okay, I asked, you know, the dead uh, if it would be okay and with great honor. I put myself inside there. And this is what I'm saying to you. To be empathetic, you've got to be very, very experiential. So I climbed inside of one of these ovens. Clearly it's illegal, of course, right? I'm not advocating doing illegal things, but you've got to be empathetic. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, diving. It's the only time I've ever been in a cage. I'm a dive master, and I've dived with whale sharks, bull sharks, uh, Galapagos sharks, all, all the types of sharks. And this is uh, diving with the Great Whites in the Southern Ocean. So I took these photos, and this is without cages, by the way. I took this uh, photo, just go back. This guy, it's hard to see, he was about 14 foot. Um, and I was in the cage, which swam out, and took the photo, I was about six feet away from this guy, um, and then pulled myself back in again. Next, Galapagos, of course. Galapagos. <laughs> this fella here was about 18 feet and this is not me, but I took the photo. When I was in this boat, it was crazy. I got closer and closer and closer to this guy. I was about, my face was about six inches away from his. Again, uh, probably a little too dangerous. <laughs> Next one, more great whites. Uh, Thailand, I think, skinny times. Thailand, I think. Um, Malaysia, I think done. All right, so there's some photos there. What I want to do is, um, little fuss. Let me just do this really, 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 really quickly. Um, this is, some of you guys may have seen this. Can I just, can you just hand out some of those? There's about 25. Just hand them around really fast. Um, actually. You guys study the Odyssey. What I want to say to you guys is that, and for you parents, your sons and daughters did a terrific job here. Odysseus follows the hero's journey. Ordinary world, call to adventure. You guys are going to have to work that out for yourself. You guys are too young to go off and have deeply international adventures yet. You're too early for that. Meeting the mentor. You guys have to seek out mentors. I'm going to give you some advice. I don't want to talk about what style they're going to be. You guys have to go and find mentors for yourself. Okay. Crossing the threshold, obviously I'm older than you, and your parents, if they've done adventure <coughs> things, will say there's a number of thresholds. Clearly you guys are going to have intellectual thresholds. Many of you guys are going to go to university. It's a very, very important time. You should do your homework. You should aspire to go to UVA. You should absolutely do those things. You should absolutely follow the speed limit and obey the law. I, I'm not being silly about that. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you've got to go and travel, OK? so. Um, for me, crossing the threshold, probably joining the Norwegian Merchant Marine. And I joined the Norwegian Merchant Marine with less than 24 hours notice. And I quit my job at Sydney University, said goodbye to all my friends, and became a Norwegian officer. I got my uh, medical done that thick, all in Norwegian, in Sydney Harbour, OK? Uh, and then joined them, and I was off, OK? And I was an officer with them for just under a year. That was it, that was interesting for me. Step six, tests, allies, and enemies. This is where you will be doing, I hope, it's structurally, this part here, lots and lots of adventures for yourselves. You guys have to go and seek adventures. Otherwise, you will not gain empathy with other people. And what you have to do as a student at Robinson is try to be a good global contributor. You people are all very moral, I'm sure that's very true. But if you don't, understand other people. It's very, very difficult. Then you just remain uh, a template, okay? You're just an academic potential person. To be a really, to have a meaningful life, you have to try and understand the world. Steps seven and eight there. The notion of the 
approach to the innermost cave and the ordeal. For you students who study this, you know this means that notion of great challenge. Are you worthy? Do you have courage? Do you have moral fiber to face whatever these dangers may be? And Mr. Elan is correct. There are a great many mental challenges. And there are a great deal of physical challenges, whatever that may be. I want to tell you guys that the role of fear can be valuable, okay? But be clear about this. You've got to have good judgment. It is wrong to do dangerous things for no reason. And it's wrong to do very dangerous things. Don't do that, okay? What I'm saying is, as Mr. Eline was saying, you, you've got to live, okay? You, you have to live, okay? If you live, then what I have tried to teach some of my students sometimes, certainly my own sons, is you get these templates of action. And there are many things. I don't have ESP. I'm going to do certain things or things are going to happen. I'm going to have problems in my life. I don't know how to face them. But because I've experienced many things and I've behaved in certain ways, there is a template. I did this in this situation. Okay? I ran with these bulls. I dived with these sharks. This situation here is not new to me. As an as a, as a template. I can face this because I have a history of doing so. You won't know that until you go out and travel, okay? And you're not going to have empathy until you do that. So, it's interesting. Uh, this notion of traveling. So, I say to you that you need to travel for empathy. And step nine, the reward and then the road back, resurrection and so forth. You're going to make mistakes, as Mr. Eiland says. And I say to my students, you, you should be making productive mistakes, but do not make strategic mistakes. Don't make strategic mistakes. Okay, you blow your, you blow your opportunity at UVA. That is a stupid thing. There's nothing good about that, okay? But you seek challenges and you do things um, and you make these mistakes upon the way, then you grow and so forth. That is how you are going to get empathy. And if you do that, then you are going to end up in, in this way, here, here, or here, to be a global contributor. So I just want to finish with saying that this final step for Odysseus when he comes back, and it's a, it's a nice metaphor, clearly the yellow brick road is exactly the same, is returning home with the elixir. And what does that mean? Well, if you have empathy for other people, if you have good values, and if you have sought out actions of adventure, then you can be a good person. What you should end up doing after building character and so forth is coming back and contributing. The greatest gift that you can give other people is by being generous of your experiences. And I thank you, Beth, and you are absolutely right. Uh, I do enjoy talking to students. And, and I will always, always, always give to them of my experiences because being, having a meaningful life is key. The elixir for yourself, and if you don't understand this, you need to go out and travel and understand this, is the greatest joy you can ever have is the gift of giving that to other people. You are going to increase your power for yourself if you uh, provide experiences for other people. For my own sons, I'm trying to teach them to do exactly the same. And some of you guys know that every year for, I'm sorry, every summer for the last five years, it's taken us five years, okay? They have now traveled to every single state with me in some beaten up old vehicle of some type. And we've experienced many, many, many things. They have already started upon this journey. So, what I want to say to you is live a life of adventure. And I thought just to finish, I'm sorry I went over time, is I started at the bottom with these, these boots here. I thought that just for fun, I'll show you a couple more things at the top. Um, can we, could you guys, do you three come up here? Would you mind holding these up? So I thought <coughs> I would just show you a couple of traits, just one each person. This guy here, this guy is called a dry as a bone. And there is nothing on the planet, there is nothing on the planet that is as warm as this. And this is an Australian uh, oil skin riding coat. And I have ridden all over the outback in Australia, thousands of miles in this coat. This one here is a leather jacket that I got, that I designed and got made in South Korea. And I was saying to a couple of my students, there was only one needle big enough, powerful enough in all of South Korea to 
to actually make this, and it's not in Seoul, okay, where I lived for, for a few years. And so this saved my life, because I had some bad accidents there. This saved my life a couple of times. This one here was made for me by the mother of some Romanian mafia guys that I befriended for, <laughs> that I befriended because I was staying in their mother's house and it was, it was interesting because the next day was the Australian elections and my brother was the right hand man to the Australian Prime Minister and it just turned up on BBC, her, t her TV station at Bucharest, right? Um, and her sons were there, and they were sort of these low-level mafia guys, and it was interesting. I was fairly scared of them at that point. <laughs> and then I said, I've got to go down to the Australian Embassy tomorrow to, uh, to vote. And I said, oh, what's that? And up comes the Australian, um, you know, the BBC uh, story about it. And then from out, out from behind John Howard, you know, my brother appears on their TV screen. And I played it real cool. I said, oh, that's him there. It's my brother. And so the mafia guys thought I was a made man. And so they took me out and did all these things, and the mother um, knitted me this um, cardigan here. So, live a life of adventure and seek empathy in your world. Thank you.